many people have ever heard of the Tour of France? How many people have heard of Lance Armstrong? So usually in America, because in Europe it's a very, it's like one of the biggest uh, sporting events in Europe, but a lot of people in America just put Lance Armstrong and Tour of France together. So my uh, presentation will kind of take um, American cycling and kind of form it with like Tour of France so, so we kind of know a little bit more about it. Uh, just a uh, brief history on Tour de France. The first one was in 1903, and there's been 105 editions. Um, there are 21 stages to the race, so it's uh, usually equivalent to about 2,200 miles. Uh, they do it over 21 days, or 23 days. There's 21 stages, but it takes about 23 days to do it. Um, the very first one, I think, was only eight stages, and uh, so it's kind of grown since then. Uh, at the end of each stage, uh, the cyclist with the least amount of time gets to wear the yellow jersey, so like, You'll see on TV, and Lance Armstrong was known, a lot of people know it, uh, the yellow jersey. And according to UCI uh, a Cycling History, it's the most prestigious uh, jersey you can win uh, in any um, cycling race. Uh, the Tour de France is considered uh, the, the biggest cycling major in the world. So their season, um, they go through Spain, um, France, and Italy, and those are usually where the, the biggest races are. And you get a lot of uh, stage races, and then you get a lot of one-day races. The Tour de France is the biggest stage race, um, and it's the most prestigious one. Um, types of cycling jerseys you can win. So throughout the, the race, there's different things you can win, which the general classification was with one. At the end of each stage, you, uh, the rider with the least amount of time will get the yellow jersey, and that's what everyone wants. And at the end of the race, whoever ha at the end of the 21 stages, whoever has the least amount of time will get the yellow jersey. Uh, and then you have the mountain classification. So when you went off in the Tour de France, there's uh, different stages where you're riding up mountains, basically, and it's, they take the time of whoever can ride up the mountains uh, the fastest, and you get the, the red polka dot jersey. And that's uh, one of the bigger jerseys you can get, but it's not as prestigious as winning the yellow jersey. And then the points classification, which is a really hard one to win because uh, throughout the race, there's things called sprints where they're put like a point A and point B on the long, it's a long ride, but it's a shorter period of the ride. And whoever can finish that part of the race best, uh, fastest gets points. But it's a hard one to win because you're kind of pacing yourself. So it's got a lot of guys will do look to get the green jersey if they know they're not going to win and they just want to have uh, uh, something to win for that day or motivate them. And then the young rider classification, which is the newest jersey, is given to anyone that's 26 and over and whoever has the fastest time for that age. Um, countries represented in the Tour de France. So we see France has had 36 winners, Belgium's 18, Spain's 12, Italy's 10, and Great Britain's had six. America's nowhere on there, but uh, we are known for having one of uh, the most famous or infamous uh, riders of all time, Lance Armstrong, which is kind of crazy. Uh, Greg Lamont. So in American cycling, we've technically only had one person win the Tour de France, and that's Greg Lamont. Um, he's won three Tour de France, uh, he has had three Tour de France wins, uh, most wins by any American, because uh, he's only had one. Uh, but there were 1886, or 1986, 1989, and 1990. And uh, in 1990, uh, 1986, he uh, won um, what was his first one, and it was uh, dubbed Slain the Badger. The, uh, ESPN 30 for 30 day, um, they did a film on it and it's considered the greatest uh, Tour de France uh, win ever because uh, the Badger, uh, Bernard uh, Himla, I can't really say his name, but it's something like Himla, uh, was his teammate. So cycling's a team sport, and a lot of times you see one guy win, but it's throughout the stage you're, you're helping set your team at, teammate up to win. But Bernard, or Badger, he, had, he was a really good rider, and um, he had agreed that he was gonna give Greco Mon the win, and Greco Mon was gonna become the captain next year. And so it was kind of like his way of passing the torch. But halfway through the race, uh, he kind of just broke that promise and started trying to race Greco Mon, and they found themselves going back and forth, even as teammates, and it became like this big rivalry, and people were like, what's going on? Like, he was supposed to just hand off the win to him. But uh, in the end, Greco Mon ends up winning and beats his teammate, and it goes down in history as one of the greatest career of France wins. Mm -hmm. Um, in 1989, he won by only eight seconds, which was the closest win of uh, in uh, Tour de France. And he's uh, really known for introducing aero bars on bike. 
And so that had never been seen before, and you can't, you can't really tell, but in this picture, they're like, they sit in front of your handlebars, and you can put your, your arms on them and lay down, and it makes you more aerodynamic. And no one had ever done that before. And he also was the first one to wear a, uh, their, um, this type of helmet, which is, it's a little bit different than most helmets, and they use them in time trials now. But no one had ever seen that. So when he came out with all this stuff, people were like, what is he doing? It was super weird. But um, in the, his recent book, uh, David Daniel P. Weiss, uh, the, the book is uh, called the, uh, the Comeback. It's a, and he dubbed him the true king of American cycling. Kind of taking a shot at Lance Armstrong because he was considered the greatest rider. But Greg Lamont never tested positive. And actually, before, uh, after 1986, he was on a hunting um, trip with his brother in law, got shot in the back on accident. And so to come back from 1986 to 1989 and be able to win those Tudor Francis was a really big deal after being shot. And he's part of an, only um, an eight man group to win three or more Tudor Francis. So it's a big deal. And that brings me to Lance Armstrong. So Lance Armstrong is probably, many people consider one of the most famous riders of all time, and probably would be the greatest of all time if he had never been caught uh, for doping. So he won seven consecutive Tour de France wins, um, which is a super big deal because no one had ever won that many in a row. I think the most up to that point was two or three. And so for him to win seven was a huge deal. Uh, he was on the US Postal Team, so he actually wrote for the American technically wrote for the American government, and that's why he got in so much trouble for lying, because uh, he lied under basically uh, working for the US government. Um, he would have the record for most wins if they weren't taken away, but he wrote, raced at nine total races, and he raced in two races before he uh, was diagnosed with cancer, and both were, well, the first race he didn't finish, and in the second race he finished 35th. Uh, so when he came back from after, after having cancer and winning seven consecutive Tour de France wins, people thought that was super crazy. Like, so he wasn't even that good of a rider before, but now he's winning all these races. So that was a big deal. Um, January 17, 2013, he finally confessed to the uh, blood doping on Oprah, which is a weird place to do it. Um, uh, um, he was considered the biggest fraud cycle in history by National Geographic, um, which is big deal. And in conclusion, we see that we, in America, excited hasn't been a huge deal, but we have two of the most famous riders of all time, which is very interesting.